Well, the Razorback football team played better against LSU. In fact, played one of their best games defensively that they had all season long, but it wasn't enough to keep the golden boot at home. So we're going to talk about that as well as getting to the status of KJ Jefferson and why it is more important than we even realized of having him healthy and also talk a little Razorback basketball here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode of Locked On Razorbacks is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's matchup between Arkansas and Ole Miss. Right on Sling TV, Sling, the TV you love for the price you love. Try it today. Well, I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, although I know that when the Razorbacks lose, it always makes it a little bit more difficult to be excited about everything. And uh, that's <clears throat> that's what kind of happened in this one. Uh, Arkansas drops a game at home to the LSU Tigers by a final score of 13-10. to 10. A low-scoring affair that probably most people would not have expected it to be. But that's what ended up happening. And it was funny. I was there actually at the game, and, man, it was cold. That's probably still why I have a little bit of uh, a little bit of frog in my throat because, man, the wind blowing and being dry and everything. Winter has come, and it was definitely in Fayetteville this past weekend. But, uh, you know, this was a game that we talked about all week long, and I felt like there was maybe a chance that Arkansas would be able to, to turn it around and maybe win this game. And I think that they were capable. Like, they were 100% capable of being able to win this game on the assumption of KJ, but KJ didn't play, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But I want to start with, I want to start with the good. Let's start with the good first, because I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the bad, which I know there's a, a lot of people that have had reactions to this. But let me get to the good. Shout out to Barry Odom in this Razorback defense. I, I know that it's, you know, people may say it's too little, too late. You know, the, the defense should have showed up earlier in the year. And 100%, you would be correct. I would I would not disagree with you. The defense was putrid in the beginning part of the season. But the past two games, they have played as good as anyone could have asked. I mean, you're talking about in two games against two competent offenses, mind you. It's not like they were going up against, you know, an AM offense. Like, competent offenses. They were able to hold Liberty to 21 and LSU to 13. It's in, in the past six quarters, they've only given up 13 points. One touchdown in six straight quarters. I mean, if you were to say that at any point in time, this year would have a game like that for Razorback football, especially defensively, nobody would have guessed that. But that's what they've done. They've been able to they get after the quarterback effectively. I think that the move of Quincy McAdoo to the secondary it has been an incredible, an incredible move that has really helped this defense out. I think the tackling's gotten better. I think the scheming's gotten better. The physicality's gotten better. Uh, the playmaking ability has gotten better. You had a pick uh, with uh, Brini uh, against LSU in the early part of the game. Uh, you had a fumble recovery. Like You have done so many good things defensively. And I honestly am shocked by that. And it's not to say that I felt like this defense was so bad that they were irredeemable, but just given the circumstances of how the season went and, you know, getting to the point in that you're, when you're in the season, people are still being banged up and whatever. The fact that you've been able to been able to bring the defense the way you have has been awesome. And the fact that you have been able to, in these two losses, as much as it sucks in those two losses, your defense has done such a good job to keep the game still in doubt to the very end. That is a huge compliment to the defense. So give a shout out and give credit where credit is due. Barry Odom and a lot of these guys on the defense have, have gotten a lot of crap this year. And I'm not saying not, none of it wasn't warranted because, again, the defense did struggle. But you got to give a lot of credit for this defense turning it around, still playing hard, still playing fast, physical, and doing a great job of keeping these teams in check especially at home and especially in a game like this. The defense was great. But unfortunately, that's not how games are simply won just by playing great defense because you have to have an offense that helps out too. And I think we all kind of had an idea that K.J. Jefferson was not going to play in this game. I think people were hopeful. I was hopeful. I was thinking that maybe, just maybe, 
he'll be good enough to go, but he wasn't. And Malik Hornsby instead started in this game. Now, I'm I'm not going to try to be over the top critical because I still believe that, you know, they're college kids and you don't want to ever come off as just being uh, r- rude or mean for the sake of being mean. It's apparently what I, I leave those to uh, people on uh, Razorback Twitter to do. But Malik Hornsby in this game, you know, running the ball, he had 37 rushing yards and 18 attempts. He got sacked three times in this game. He was four of nine passing for, for 24 yards. He's not the answer at quarterback. Like, and I think that last week you might have been able to still get by with him if, if he played instead of KJ. And I still think that that would have been the right decision if they would have played him. Cause I think that his legs alone, because Arkansas last week was the, was the rushing attack. Like they just couldn't run the ball. And I think with him that he might have been able to at least cause some problems for that Liberty defense who's not as fast, not as athletic as his LSU defense. I still stand by that. But in this game, Malik Hornsby, it was it was pretty apparent, pretty evident that in the beginning part of the game that he wasn't it. He has incredible speed and incredible athleticism, but he ain't it. And the offense just could not get anything going. They could not run the ball effectively whatsoever. Once again in this game, Rocket Sanders had 12 carries for only 46 yards. It's 3.8 yards a carry. A.J. Green, seven carries for 31 yards. And Dominion had three carries and four yards. I mean, I give credit to LSU and uh, going out and just putting it to Arkansas, and especially with Harold Perkins Jr. Like, that dude was a monster. He had four sacks in this game, and there was just no answer for for him, uh, for Arkansas's offensive line and everything. But you <laughs> – you did it. You did do some things in the second half. Once Kate Ford come in again, we'll talk about KJ and all that here in a second. So, but I don't want to uh, go too much on that one. But it's just extremely unfortunate that this team, for whatever reason, all season long, has yet to just have both things come together and work at the same time. I mean, every game that you can point to this year, it's either been that the defense has played great or the offense has played great. Now, it's been more about the offense playing great or playing good enough, but it's never at the same time. I mean, maybe the, besides the Mississippi State game, because you didn't have KJ in that game, neither offense nor defense played really well. But like the past two weeks, the deep field defense played incredible. The previous two weeks before that, the offense played incredible. South Carolina, offense did great. Defense, not so much. Missouri State, offense turned it on late. Defense, not so much. a and like, it's just, that was a stupid game. Uh, I mean, so you can point to that. But Bama, you know, defense gives up a lot. Offense didn't score. I mean, it's just for whatever reason, this team can't get things to work their way at the same time. Now, is there a simple answer for that? Is, is it a coaching problem? Is it a lack of preparation? You know, I don't know. I, I think it's hard to put your finger on it when it's so inconsistent throughout the whole season. I give credit to Sam Pittman and his staff for having his team ready in this game because I think that the team, mentally at least, as as even Sam Pittman said, they had a passion. They they were passionate. They were ready to go in this game. But they just can't put it together all at the same time. Like, this, like it's just weird when I'm looking at this because, like, penalties, for instance, is another thing that this team was so bad at, so bad at all season long. And then now, like, they had two penalties against LSU. Two. I mean, how do you, how do you, you can't ask for anything more than that. You know, Arkansas, as far as, uh, you know, turnovers and everything, uh, you know, they did have a fumble in this game. But, uh, and besides that, though, but, I mean, it's just, there, there's, it just, none of it makes sense, I guess. That's, that's really what it comes down to, is that, None of it is making sense to me. Trying to figure it out, and I, I just think it's impossible. I just think it's this, it's not going to work out if I if I try to try to make it work. So I was trying to look back at the box score because I got it pulled up in front of me. And I honestly didn't remember. Yeah, if the fumbles, yeah, Arkansas lost two fumbles in this game. So I wanted to make sure. But still, it's like they just the things that they've struggled with at the beginning of the year, now they're not struggling with. Penalties, defense, secondary play. They're not struggling with it anymore. 
And then offensively, running the ball, blocking well. Can't do it. I mean, Dalton Wagner being out of this game was huge. Not that uh, they've always been perfect, but certainly, you know, when you trot out your captains, like Arkansas had three captains out there that did not play in this game. Dalton Wagner, K.J. Jefferson, Jalen Catalan. Like, those are three captains that they don't have in this game. It's not an excuse, but it's just the way it is. Arkansas is just they're – not, they're not good enough to overcome those things. They're just not good enough to overcome – the the injuries are not good enough to overcome your best player being out. Because I've always think about it like last year. I know it's it's a different year. But you think about Traylon Burks and how pivotal he was. He didn't play in the bowl game. But just think about it like in the games that Arkansas won. If you had if there was a game in the SEC last year that Traylon Burks didn't play, there would have been few games Arkansas would have lost. Like that AM game, you would probably may have lost that game if it wasn't for Traylon Burks if he was out. You know what? May have lost Mississippi State in that game. He was out. He may have lost the, I mean, not anything. You would have for sure lost Missouri, but it would have been maybe more of a struggle. It's like when your best player goes out, it's a huge impact. And in this case with KJ Jefferson, it's a huge impact. And we're going to talk about that and, and, and the meaning behind it and how big it is here in just a second. But first, folks, I want to tell you about the Upside app. It is incredible right now because we know as we're getting closer to the holiday season, we're trying to save some money. And we're trying to make sure that we're able to travel for the holidays, that we're able to get great Christmas gift for the kids, everything like that. But with inflation going up and food prices going up and gas prices being where they're at, it's tough. It's really a tough. But that's why I started using Upside. Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on each and every purchase, whether it's at the gas station, when I'm going over to the grocery store, or what I'm eating out, it, like the things I do on the daily, the things that I do every day in my life, no matter what I end up doing, no matter where I end up going, I can find ways to make cash back, legitimately cash back. So to get started, you can get on this too. Go to the Upside app and use my promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next claim, whatever offer you're using when you buy Upside, check in at the business and pay as usual with a credit card and debit card and you'll get paid. It's as simple as that. So download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, KJ Jefferson, man. Um, I hate it that he's not healthy. I think everybody does. The fact that he was not 100% last week and obviously was not even playing this week, I don't ever want to play the woulda, coulda, shoulda game, but it is one of those things that you can't get out of your mind of if we had KJ Jefferson 100% in these two games, Arkansas would have won them. Now, that's not how the game's played. That's not how it works because at the end of the day, it's still a win or it's still a loss. And in this case, for both weeks, both Saturdays, it's been a loss. So you can't deny that fact. But there is no doubt that K.J. Jefferson, 100%, is QB1. And it is incredibly disappointing to see how much drop-off there is after K.J. Jefferson. Like, last week against Liberty, when K.J. was probably, at, I, what do you put it at, 50 60% healthy, he still almost led the team back to a victory. He still was in a position to tie the game to possibly send it to overtime. He was doing that. And in this game, like after Malik Hornsby got benched, which I know has been talked about a little bit, maybe they should have just brought him out at halftime instead of waiting even more with Malik because the Malik experience is not working. Like Kate Ford comes in and throw a touchdown pass, and, and you know he did some good things, but some fumbles and whatnot. It's like KJ's the guy. And then if, if KJ was 100% in this game, not only do I think Arkansas wins, I think Arkansas wins convincingly. Because there's some sort of spark. There's some sort of energy anytime that you got your guy back and he's battling for you. But again, Arkansas didn't add it. I understand it. I'm not trying to make excuses for it. But it's a reality. And I never would have thought that it would be this much of a drop-off, this bad of a drop-off. Because in the games that K.J. Jefferson has not played this year, Arkansas has scored a total of 27 points. In two games that he did not play a snap, Arkansas scored 27 points in those two games. 
And I think the biggest factor, and maybe this is like, there's a lot of elements of his game missing, but I think one of the biggest elements of his game missing is red zone. Arkansas is not great in the red zone as it is, but they are disgusting in the red zone without KJ Jefferson. In the Mississippi State game, they had so many blown opportunities they didn't get uh, against BYU. I know it's BYU, but in the very end of that game when KJ had to come out, and then you were like, I think it was like first and goal from the two, Arkansas still couldn't punch it in. And then in this game, Arkansas, once again, was bad in the red zone. Now, some of that, to be honest, some of that is the decision-making of going forward on fourth down in a few cases in this game. But a lot of that is just because you don't have a big bruising quarterback like K.J. Jefferson that the defense has to be mindful of. I'd, I, the, uh, <laughs> the decision to go not go for the field goal and go forward on fourth down, I had a major problem with. I, I, again, I'll be critical when it needs to be critical or when I think like I need to be critical, but that was a bad decision. In a game like this, you got to, you got to, points aren't going to come very often in the, a game like this. You could tell when the early going, it was going to be a defensive battle. Take the points when you can every time, every time. I kind of felt the same way, you know, in other games that Arkansas has had happened before where I can kind of get it or understand it. Or if even Arkansas had a pretty good success rate of getting, like, if it was like fourth and short even, like fourth and one, I could get it. But you got a great kicker in Cam Little. Your defense is playing lights out. Your Malik Hornsby or Cade, whoever's in there, is not that guy. They're not that good. Not good enough to do that. So take the points. Again, it's always woulda, coulda, shoulda. If it works, if it goes four and fourth down, ends up working, nobody brings it up. But you got to take the points in those situations. And look at the final score. It ended up costing you, potentially going to overtime at least. The KJ factor is incredible. And I just hate it for, <laughs> I hate it for everybody. You know, you, it just, it, it is what it is. You got you to gotta hopefully have them back for Ole Miss against them this weekend. And if you don't, like if you don't have KJ back 100% healthy, you're not going to beat Ole Miss. You may not, you're not going to beat Missouri. This offense is so bad without KJ. So bad. I never thought it would be this way. Now, I know some of you are listening to this and, and yelling at to your mic or to your, your mic, your speaker, or at, on YouTube or whatever at me right now. And I understand it because I haven't even brought up a factor that a lot of you have been bringing up and a lot of you tweeted at me about, about Kendall Bryles. And I have said earlier this year, that I was a huge fan of Kendall Bryles, that I still think that it was one of the, you know, a good offensive coordinator. And I think that there was a lot of unfair criticism thrown his way, 100%. I still believe that there's been a lot of good things that, K, uh, that K, K, Kendall Bryles has done for Arkansas's offense, 100%. But I also think that Kendall Bryles' offense is only as good as KJ is. Now you can say that's a that's a that's a positive. You can say it's a negative, whatever it is. But when you don't have your best player, when you don't have quarterback and KJ, the offense is terrible. Does that mean that Kendall Brawl should have a better preparation for the quarterbacks that are up front? Maybe so. But it's it's just really hard for me. Like I, I'm seeing why Kendall Brawls wanted KJ Jefferson to play against Liberty. Like everyone was going after him for that, and I was one of them too. Like I was like, no, you shouldn't have played him. But I I get it. I still don't agree with it, but I at least get it. Those are the guys that see these guys in practice every single day. Kendall Bryles, is, he sees it. He's like, this Malik Hornsby can't run this offense. He can't be to that level. Again, is that a coaching problem? Is that Kendall Bryles' fault because he is the quarterback coach? I know maybe. Like maybe, yeah, that, that could be a factor into it. I mean, it's his job to coach him up 100%. But it's also like you got to play with the cards you're dealt and the cards that Arkansas is dealt right now. They're not very good, but you still got to roll out there. You know, you have a pair of twos going up against a guy that may have a, a royal flush, but, you know, it's, it's like it's game time. You got to throw him down and hope for the best. Maybe he folds. Like, <laughs> that's kind of the way it is right now. But there's no doubt that there's a huge drop off with it. And you need KJ back. You need him back now. ASAP, quickly as possible. And I hate that for Malik because I think Malik's got a lot of athleticism, but I just don't think he's the answer quarterback. I don't think he's the quarterback of the future for Arkansas. You know, does he need to move back a position? Does, does he transfer out? I don't know his situation. I don't. But it's hard for me to blame 
like Sam Pittman for for Malik because a lot of people are just like, oh, you guys, you, you guys have killed this kid. So, like I'm like, no, I don't buy that. At the end of the day, you got to go out there and perform. Like, and everyone's like, well, you know, it's just, it's it's because Kendall or whatever. KJ never had a problem with it. Felipe Franks never had a problem with it. They can perform in this offense. So I, I have a hard time believing that all the blame, everything goes towards Kendall Bryles. I don't buy that. Now, Bryles is without or has plenty of things to be critical of, 100%. There's a lot of reasons for people to be a little bit frustrated or annoyed or maybe even questioning whether or not uh, there's some of the decisions. Like, 100%. I'm all for that. And I, I'm questioning them, too. But K.J. Jefferson is that dude, and you have to have him in this game against Ole Miss if you want a chance. If he plays and he's 100% healthy in Liberty and LSU, I think, you're, I think you win both those games. Both of those games. And you're sitting, instead of at five and five, desperate for one more win to get to a bowl game, instead, you're sitting at like seven and three right now. Seven and three on a four-game win streak, going into an Ole Miss team that is coming off of a big loss against Alabama. Maybe they're reeling a little bit. And you have a chance to finish out nine and three, but you're not. It's not the way it works. This is going to be interesting to see how this week plays out. And if if KJ, here's the thing. If KJ comes in, he's healthy and ready to go against Ole Miss, and Arkansas wins, I think, I think everyone's going to be like, okay. You know, it, it just shows you the big impact that he has. But there's definitely got to be some, some things done to try to get to that point. Arkansas is not good enough to go and win games in this conference without KJ Jefferson. They're just not. They're just not. This isn't a situation where O'Malley got hurt bringing Tyler Wilson. It's not how it works. Oh, Brandon Allen got hurt bringing Austin Allen. It's not how it works. Arkansas doesn't have that right now. But they need KJ back, and I hope he comes back. He wants to come back. It's You know that's got to be killing him inside, seeing the team struggle like they have been. I hate it because Arkansas did so good defensively, and they just couldn't, uh, couldn't find a way to take care of business there. Which also, by the way, a Appreciate all the LSU fans that were on my Instagram uh, all week long or uh, all weekend long. They pulled up the video that I had from like back in May when Arkansas football, basketball, and baseball beat LSU in all the sports. And I said, "Hey, Arkansas owns LSU this year," and they're like they're coming at me and owning me. I'm like, "Okay, well, I mean, I predicted Arkansas to lose this game, so it's not like you guys are really getting after me or anything." And then my favorite thing is when they say such mean things and look at their profile. They're like, uh, "Yeah, Jesus saves." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah." Uh, well, anyways, appreciate y'all that have been watching and uh, giving me uh, giving me a hard time. I can respect it. I can respect it at least. Our partners at Nissan have worked with us to create a new segment across the Locked On College Network called Thrilling Moments, where we're highlighting the most exciting play from the Razorbacks, whether it's in this weekend's game or whether it's going to be in their history, whatever it may be in the history of the alma mater. And this week's thrilling moment from the Razorbacks to me, since it's Ole Miss week, has to come back, <laughs> back in 2015. Just an incredible moment where the Hunter Henry heave, fourth and 25, to be able to not only get the first down conversion in overtime, but then find a way to score the touchdown in that same period and then find a way to get the two-point conversion and not only win that game on the road against Ole Miss, but also be able to keep Ole Miss out of their very first SEC championship appearance. Like That's just an incredible game that everybody will always think. But that's what makes this series so interesting, too, and that's what's going to make this game so interesting, too with uh, Arkansas welcoming in Ole Miss because of just the history between them. Like, it's insane. Last year's game was insane. The year before that was insane. You know, the 2018 game was insane. The 2017 game was insane. 2016, insane. 2015, 2014. Like, has there ever been a normal game between these teams, at least in the past 10 years? I can't find one. So this one might be another one, too, especially if KJ's back. So it'll be really exciting to see. But so many thrilling moments from this Arkansas and Ole Miss series. I expect there to be more this week as the Rebels come to Fayetteville. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier, the Armada, or the Pathfinder today. Available now at NissanUSA.com. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Okay, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, I made a little thing of the hog sexy defense. Real quick, I just wanted to bring up the basketball team because I know we need some positivity. We need some fun. We need some good things going. And Arkansas basketball. Uh, this past Friday, I went to the game there about Walton Arena against Fordham. Now, Arkansas won 74 to 48, which uh, is a great score. I mean, that's a great final score and everything. But here's, here's my quick takeaways. I know it's just two games, but here's my quick takeaways from them. First off, Shooting ain't there, ain't very good shooting. Nick Smith didn't play again, but two of it, two of 16 from three point land, whew, that ain't gonna do it. Ain't going to do it. So they got to get that figured out. They got to work on that. And I, and I think that they will, with uh, especially with uh, what uh, Muss is gonna have planned for them. But here's my, my favorite thing about this team their defense. They caused 30 turnovers, 30, 30 turnovers. They stole the ball 13 times. In this game, 13 times. Like, this defense is disgustingly good at this point in time of the year. And I will take that all day long. I would rather the team be elite at defense at the beginning part of the year than be elite at offense. Because offense can come with time, and, and defense, great defense can lead to great offense. But this team's going to be a problem. Their length, especially inside, you know, Trevin Brazil and all those guys are great, but you got Anthony Black at 6'7", playing point guard out there. And the smallest guy on the team is Devo Davis. He's like 6'4", 6'5". And, and so you have a you have a team right now that is a work in progress, got to improve a lot of ways, Must knows it too. But if they're going out there this already this point in time and playing this good a defense, dude, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem for some teams. And we'll see how they do in the Maui Invitational, which will be coming up with. They play Louisville, and God, Louisville's trash. They're so bad. So Arkansas hopefully should definitely win that game. But I, I am loving what I'm seeing from this Razorback basketball team right now. I'm loving it. The fact that they're doing this great defense. Nick Smith, once he gets back, he's your best offensive player. You know, maybe that'll add into the, the better shooting percentages and better three-point threats and all those things too. But it, it's hard not to get too excited because it, it's. I'm just waiting for it. It's going to happen just like it did last year. Team gets hot. They look good in the beginning. They hit a little bit of a slow slum spot, and they turn it off the right part. So I'm, I know it's going to happen at some point. This team's not going to go undefeated as much as that would be great. But, boy, it's it's just really hard to not see that team and just be like, dude, this is, yeah, 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 this is different. This is a little different this year, a little bit different. And uh, we'll see how they go. They got a, another game uh, coming up, uh, which we know that with uh, – Arkansas and, and football, that's kind of taken a lot of precedence and a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, attention away from it. But South Dakota State, they're going to play on Wednesday games at seven o'clock on the SEC Network Plus. And then after that is when they go to the Louisville or go to the Maui Invitational to play Louisville in game one. And then after that, they'll play either Texas Tech or Creighton, which Texas Tech's pretty good. Creighton's always a little bit good. But here's the thing. And I know we'll talk about it more. We'll talk about it more. But man, if they beat South Dakota State handily, if they go to the Maui and like won that thing, if they won the Maui Invitational, I'm not I don't want to think about it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when it happens. But basketball, man, it's looking pretty good right now for the Razorbacks. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.